Hi, wonderfully created. Welcome back to Created I Am. To celebrate Created I Am being a year old, we're going to do some videos inspired by a comment, which is to make a circle dress. There's many types of circle dresses, so I've got a few summer pieces coming up for you. We're going to be making a square dress, but you can easily make it a circle dress by circling the skirt <laughs> instead of squaring the skirt part of the the dress you're going to need two measurements the first measurement is your waist measurement make sure the tape is parallel to the floor once you have that number whether it's in inches or centimeters add on four centimeters for seam allowance up to two inches it's up to you what you prefer once you've done that you've got that then divide that by 6.284 for some reason the decimals is throwing you off just divide it by six you might have some excess but it should be okay the second measurement is how long you want the skirt part of the dress to be if you're making a square dress you want to measure the shortest length i wanted mine to go from my waist to my knee if you're making a circle skirt you're going to take the same measurement my measurement was about 60 centimeters this is going to be your length what you want to do is you cut out a square. Now I have my square, I'm folding it together to create a rectangle and then folding it again to create a smaller square. You will then have some edges which are open and then you will have one of the corners which is completely a fold. We're gonna cut out the waist from there. Put your ruler at the corner of this fold and measure or mark down the radius and mark it at different points, twisting your ruler as you go and that will form your curve which you can then cut out as you can see i'm leaving the square as a square and then i opened it once and used one of the half creases to cut my back seam now i decided to cut it long ways so the stripes were going vertically later on i want to explain why i did it that way just to show you like the process i go with working with patterns and making them pop what you then want to do is cut out a rectangle that is two times the width of your bodice pattern and is long enough to go from your shoulder to just past your waist marking. This version of a summer dress is not going to have a sleeve attachment. Instead, we're going to create a sleeve with the bodice, with the front and the back. So if you know that you want a longer sleeve, you want this length to be more than double the width of your bodice so you can create a bit of an arch which I'm going to show you. Take your material and fold it in half right sides together and then pin your bodice on it lining up the fold of your bodice with the fold of your material. Once you've secured it in place you can then start tracing and cutting it out. Make sure when you're pinning that the material goes past your waist measurement at least one centimeter for seam allowance. If it goes more than that, then that's okay. We can cut it down later. As you know, sometimes I don't know what neck I want. So for now, I just cut the shoulder. Then when I hit the end of the shoulder, I continue straight down to create my arm, a little sleeve. Then I cut the side seam and just follow that curve, curving it up slightly to create the end of my sleeve. I decided that I wanted a high neck so I went up about an inch and then cut the way around and I like my neck being a bit outer than the normal end of the shoulder so I cut about a centimeter into my block. Then you want to mark on the waist, I just followed my points on the bodice and then I also copied the darts down. Normally I do a center line as well, but I just did the two sides to create a triangle. Bring over your ruler and draw a line for the waist and then make sure you have a centimeter seam allowance going down. If you want, you can measure it. I can kind of just tell what a centimeter generally is. Turn it around, line your bodice back up and draw the dart on the other side. Once that's done, we can cut out the back. You want your back to be at least two times your back block. Remember, your back block is going to have a zip and you want it to be long enough to go past your waist. I made a slight mistake by forgetting the fact that I need to add a little bit more to that width. It can't just be double my back because I need to create that bit of space for the sleeve. So I just went with it and it just meant that I was going to have a shorter sleeve. So later, I just went and trimmed down the front sleeve to match the back sleeve, but I'll show you that when it comes to it. Take your material and fold it in half. We're not going to cut it on the fold, so just line up your block anywhere. 
cut the shoulders funneling it straight to create the arm sleeve and then cut the side seam as you can see i don't really have much of a sleeve but i just cut that fold so that we have two separate pieces i then cut the back curve making sure it's not attached and i have two separate pieces now i've used this pattern a lot and i noticed that the back dip does help reduce bulge but the reduction could be reduced a bit more i think what i need to do is take that curve and end it a bit higher about four inches higher than when it actually ends so you can see me just putting it down on my bodice block and tracing where I think it should go based on the patterns I've used before and how I know it fits in the past now I haven't cut this out of my bodice yet because I want to see how it works and then I can go back and tweak my bodice permanently if I find that that works for my body shape now this is what's beneficial about having your own bodice block you can always go back and tweak it to fit you even more once I did that, I then went to the actual material and curved the back split where the zip is going to be in accordance to the way I think would suit my body a bit more. Mark the waist as before and also mark on the darts. You take your ruler, create a straight line and then maintain a 1cm seam allowance. Turn the two pieces around and then also mark on your dart on the back. Now that I've done that, I want to cut the neck for the back. I want the neck to be the same height at the back as, as at the front. So I'm going to line up the front piece and make sure I'm starting at the right place and then curve it around. If you know that you want the front of your neck to be deeper, then you can cut it deeper at the front. Just make sure that they start at the top at the same length. So your shoulder seam should be the same. Someone did comment about doing different neck styles and I think that's great. So I'm planning to show you how to make more unique neck styles in upcoming videos so subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you know when that's uploaded another thing just to remember when you're using a bodice pattern block by the way the link for how to make that is in the bio it's super easy hopefully <laughs> um when you make this for yourself ideally you want to record down the measurements you use i don't have the measurements on this block because it's on the original plain block without seam allowance so i just use that as reference make sure that you check that your measurements are still the same for example i know some of my measurements have changed my waist measurement has changed so what i tend to do to adjust that is either taking the dot a bit more or a bit less to make up for the difference in my size you now have two pieces for the back and one piece for the front so we can now prep the front and the back by sewing down the darts. You want to take the two triangles and clip them and then pin them in place, but you can't just sew yet. You want to make sure that they're aligned properly. The two sides of the triangle of the darts should generally match up. And also when it's folded, the bases should line up. So if you need to adjust it and then repin it and then do that for the other side as well. You're going to do this for the front piece and for the back pieces so pinch it at the top and the bottom line it up but make sure it's straight at the base make sure the lines of the triangles of the darts are matched up the best you can and then pin it at multiple spots to make sure it doesn't move whilst you're sewing take it to the sewing machine and it's normally better to start at the bottom back stitch show down the line and then back stitch again going into your dart not out of the dart so you don't have any creases do this for the front and for the back so you're going to have to do this four times Take the front bodice block and lay it down with the right side facing up. Then take the two back pieces with the right side facing down so the right sides touch and you can see the wrong sides. Sew it together at the shoulder giving yourself a 1cm seam allowance. I did not do this but I advise you to sew down the sleeves and finish them at this point. Hemming it either by using bias tape or by folding it in twice before sewing the side seam. That's because if you're doing a really short sleeve like this one, it's easier to hem it before you sew the side. I sewed the sides first because I was debating how I wanted to finish the arm. So I'll show you how to sew it by doing the side seams first and then finishing the arm sleeve later. Because there's no sleeve attachment, just start at one end of the sleeve and sew it down to the end of the waist. I thought it'd be nice to show you some of my thought process when I'm deciding how to lay a piece with its patterns. Because this is going to be a nice summer dress and it's going to have some cute vibes anyway, I thought it would be nice to continue the vertical lines all the way through because that tends to be a bit more poised and elegant to have the stripes going down. So it off balances the cuteness. If I wanted to emphasize the cuteness, I'd have the vertical on top and the horizontal on the bottom. Not a big deal when you're sewing, but I just thought I would start talking about that and how I decide how to put my pieces together. 
If you could try this piece on, you also want to take the opportunity to make sure that your seam allowance works. If you're very used to using your pattern, you should find that you don't even have to try it on to make sure it's okay. But if you can, why not? Now it's time to attach the top to the skirt. Take your top bodice piece and find the center point and mark it on. You can do this on the right or the wrong side, just don't make the marking is too big. Then take your skirt and fold it in half and find the center of your circle. We're going to put them together using those two points as a lining point. Take your skirt and lay it down with the right sides facing up. Then take your bodice and flip it on with the right sides facing down so the right sides are touching. Match up the middle and if you want you can pin it. You're going to start in the middle, backstitch, sew it to the side, backstitch, go back to the middle, sew it to the side, backstitch. And that will attach your two pieces. As you can see, because of the way I cut my skirt, I have a bit of excess on the bottom of the skirt, which is okay. Whilst you're sewing, you want your dart and all your seams to be laying the right way. So if you're pushing them out, do that when you sew it one side and then push it out whilst you're sewing the other side. Kind of like how you see me doing it in the video. Once that's ready to go, it's time to add the zip if you want at this point you can trim a strip a consistent strip off the bottom of your skirt if you have excess material like i do i kept mine on because i thought it would be useful if i need to make any future adjustments i'm going to use an invisible zip but you can use any zip you want and most zip techniques should work for this kind of piece only thing is make sure your zip is long enough to go from your neck past your waist because you want to get into the dress there are a lot of detailed videos out there showing you how to attach an invisible zipper but i will try and show you what i do with an invisible zipper zips is definitely a place i need to improve on so we can learn together and we can improve together if some of you find that sometimes you sew your zip incorrectly my tip is to keep it zipped up when you're lining the right side to the right side and that should help so take your invisible zip you're going to have a wrong side and a right side so the right side of the zip is when you can't see the teeth and the wrong side is where you can see the teeth. What you want to do is open it up and then on low heat, iron down the teeth flat. That will make it easier to sew. Once I ironed it, mine started lying like this where the flaps were coming together. That should have a technical name. I don't know what the technical name is. Once you've done that, you want to be seeing the right side of your material. Do note that on the bodice, I'm going to maintain an inch allowance. But when I hit the skirt, it's going to extend to about a 2 inch allowance because of the excess I have. But my lines help me because once I hit that red line, I just go all the way down and that maintains the seam allowance on the skirt. What you want to do is take the right side of your invisible zipper and line it on your dress. What I like to do is zip it up like I said and that helps me make sure I'm putting the right side so side you can't see the zipper teeth on the right sides of the material. You have some excess tape on the top. But you want that to hang over. Your excess tape is not where you're starting. The teeth of the zip is where you're starting. So take the teeth of the zip and match it to the top neck of your bodice and then pull it down one centimeter. The reason why I'm pulling it down one centimeter is so that later, when I finish the neck, I'll be able to fold that one centimeter in and have a clean finish. That's assuming that I only fold it down once, which I like to do for curved necks because then it doesn't ruffle as much. If you know you like to sew down your neck twice, then give yourself two centimeters from when the zipper teeth starts. What I'm then gonna do is backstitch at the top and sew all the way down, trying to get as close to the zipper teeth as possible, but don't sew on the zipper teeth or else your zip will not close. Seeing as I'm ready to sew, I can make sure that the zip is open. I switched out my foot so it's a bit easier to see the zipper teeth as I'm going. You can use a normal foot if you want. Do take your time though and don't rush this process. By the way, if you need a bit of clarity about the placement and everything, I'm going to go through it again when I do the other side. I'm going quite slowly here, taking my time and making sure I'm maintaining the one inch seam allowance at the bodice and then the two inch seam allowance as I keep that line going all the way down. Of course, if you need to, as a beginner, I would advise you to pin it down first. But personally, I prefer not to have pins in the way as I'm going. Now, normally when you have a normal zip, what you can do is pull up the zipper so that you can keep sewing all the way down. But that would be difficult to do with an invisible zipper. So you're going to have to leave it and just try and get as close to the bottom as possible. Make sure you can see the right side of your material and mark your one inch seam allowance on the top. Hopefully that one inch can continue down if your bodice and your skirt is aligned. If you have extra material like mine, just follow that line down. So I now need to maintain about a two and a half inch seam allowance here because the flap is a bit more. Grab the other side of your material where your zip is attached 
and fold it so that the right sides are together and you can see the wrong side of the zip and the wrong side of your bodice. Use that to line it up with the other side so you're sandwiching the right sides together. Remember that the top of your zip needs to be one centimeter down from your neck. You don't care about the excess tape, it's where the zip ends. That needs to be one centimeter down. If you know you're gonna fold your neck twice, pull it down two centimeters so you have that space. Pin it if you want to, give yourself the inch allowance and then take it to the sewing machine to sew it down. Backstitch it at the top and then continue. So if you're finding it hard to go close to the super teeth and still move the material smoothly, just do a stitch down the middle of the tape and then go back and get closer to the teeth in an angle that's a bit better. This is what mine look like and I would say this may be the best invisible zip I have done. <laughs> I was so happy with it, it came out so well. I'm getting better with this so we'll see how we progress. And when I tried it on, I noticed that me cutting off a bit of the back was a good idea because the zip was laying smooth, smooth. It was so good. Now we just need to finish off the bottom where there's no zip. So what you're going to do is find the seam where you're attaching the zip and you want to sew just before it ends as close to it as possible but not on it and then sew all the way down. Make sure you can see the wrong side. Line up your excess material properly so I made sure my lines were matching. And then start just on the left of where the seam ends from where you attach the zipper. Backstitch and then sew all the way down to the bottom of the skirt. Backstitching again and that will close the bottom of your skirt. So now it's time to finish the neck and the arms. Another reason I only gave myself one centimeter at the neck is because I was deliberating whether or not to use bias tape. I ended up not using it because I liked the idea of the stripes going all the way up without being interrupted by a white line. So instead I just took the top neckline and folded it in once i'd advise you to iron that down and then you can sew that in place if you know you want your neck to be more finished you can zigzag the edge or you can use a locking machine to lock the edges before folding it down one centimeter and ironing it down and sewing it down or give yourself two centimeters at the top of your zip so you can fold it in twice when you sew it in place make sure you have the flap of the zip folded into the wrong side and then fold onto the wrong side i also dipped the corner of the zip as a triangle then folded it down so that nothing was sticking out i'd advise you to do this and pin it in place on both sides or ends of the zip i only did it on one end backstitched and then sewed down and then held the pot in place i'd advise you to pin it at both ends if not all the way around now it's time to finish the arms i cut off the excess again if you want that little excess um, arm sleeve going on do accommodate it when you are cutting the bodice I'd advise you to have that little bit because it makes it easier to finish because I had to trim mine down my arm sleeve quote unquote was starting right at the corner of my armpit which made it very hard to finish it the original way I wanted to I wanted to originally finish it by folding it in twice but because it's right at the corner it wasn't laying properly so I had to default to using bias tape the right side of the bias tape does not have any folds, the wrong side is where you can see the folds. Line it up to your sleeve and then pull it down so you have a bit of excess and allowance. Then open up the top and match that with the edge of your arm. You're going to sew down that crease starting at the side seam. Do not go past the side seam. Pin it in place and then match it to your sewing machine starting at the side seam of your piece. Sewing down the crease of the bias tape all the way round. Then once you get to the end, snip it off. Do not snip it off like I am <laughs> using your uh, thread scissors. I couldn't be bothered to get up and find my other scissors, but <sighs> we move on. Sew it down and make sure you end at the seam of the bodice, the side seam. Do not overlap the bias tape at this point or you have weird creases. What you want to do is you want to see the wrong side of the material and you want to now close off the bias tape by sewing down the bias tape. So I, all I did was sew down the white bias tape so it actually joins in with the side seam. Once that was done, all I had to do was now sew down the other half of the bias tape, which I did not open up because I wanted it to stay folded so it has a clean edge. This is not normally how bias tape is used, but we had to use ingenuity, you know, to finish off this piece as best as we could. So... 
this is what we have and again the reason i had to do it this way is because i had to cut off that excess sleeve if i had a bit of a sleeve more than what i had this would have been easier and i could just fold it down twice once that was done on both sides all i had to do now was hem the bottom of the skirt just a bit of a tip maintain your seam allowance number one I fold it in one centimeter then fold it one centimeter again if you're at the sewing machine and you're doing this notice how my hand does not move my hand at the bottom of the screen moves down about 10 centimeters then i fold it one centimeter fold again and then i hold that position until it gets to the sewing machine foot then i go back and do the same system again and again and again the reason why you hold it in place as you're going is to make sure that that fold stays as you want it if you keep moving your hand you may find that the fold you're creating start moving in size getting bigger or smaller and it's not smooth and there you go you've now created a nice simple summer dress a square circle summer dress with a simple sleeve and a zip i hope to upload a circle dress which is not a bodice and a bottom it's a full circle dress from the top down as well as a standard circle dress where you have a sleeve as well. Plus, I'll be reading your suggestions and seeing what else we can do on Created I Am. Thank you so much for the support. It's really nice to see how the channel has developed. I actually really enjoy this. It's a really nice way to have been doing something during 2021 and 2020, given everything that's going on. Continue to leave your suggestions and your feedback at Created I Am if you try any of these projects. And of course, most importantly, no matter what's going on around you, remember that you are wonderfully created.